Welcome to the Kofu Mama Show. Today we have Sue Donnellan, who is a parent mentor, child behavioral specialist, and a household harmony transformer. And she has a best selling book uh, called Secrets to Parenting Without Giving a F. <laughs> Hi, Sue. How are you today? Thanks for coming to the show. Thank you, Sarah. I'm doing great. Thank you. Amazing. So let's just get straight to the point because it's clear that your book gets straight to the point. So I love the title of your book. And what exactly do you mean by parenting without giving an F? Well, it, it is an interesting choice of a title, uh, and really it, it was born out of the fact that uh, with parenting, as time went on, my kids are grown now, so I've got all the parenting in my rearview mirror through mm -hmm. all the phases, all the different ages, yeah. and in an effort to raise independent kids and in an effort to teach kids to be accountable and um, just independent, uh, Mm. This is the mindset. This is the parenting mindset that is what was successful for me. And it, it's tongue in cheek, but parenting without giving an F is really, it's a, a counterintuitive concept. And, and in the book, as you read it, you do, I, I tie it back to that whole philosophy of just letting go and not micromanaging and not really getting so worked up over the things that we typically do get worked up over that don't mean anything that adds stress and overwhelm to our daily lives. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's, it's, it's a fun title. It's something that's catchy, but it's also got a lot of meaning behind it too. And that um, if we want our kids to make their own decisions and we want them to learn through consequences uh, mm -hmm. and mirror a, an out an outside lifestyle, meaning like a society on the outside, outside of the home and mirror mm. those consequences that are real life consequences, then we have to parent kind of without giving an F. We have to kind of let go and let the kids live their lives and, and learn on their own. I see. That makes a lot of sense. Um, actually, recently uh, I read there was a study that high income families versus low income families, a lot of the low income families uh, grow up with much more independent kids because they have to not give an F about it because they don't have the time to, to deal with it. So I can see I, that as being true. And I know that for myself, I kind of credit my attitude and the mindset that I developed to the fact that uh, when I got pregnant with what I thought was going to be my second baby, I ended up with natural triplets. So I went from one to four kids. Overnight. Oh my God. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah, that's amazing. And, and that's another and that's kind of another funny part of my title is that mm -hmm. I never really wanted kids. I'm not a real I'm not a real kid person. I'm not a person who babysits for money. I'm not a person who wanted to hold a baby or, you know, oh, I mean, yeah. just got got goo goo. Yeah. And so my husband loves kids and I had I'm like, OK, I'll have a kid for you. You know, I'll have a couple kids for you. And that. <laughs> Out of all people, I ended up with natural triplets. So once I you know, was running my own business, and my husband's in the military, so we deployed quite a bit. I went from one to four kids. My attitude was just such that, you know, listen, I need you guys to, to, to do more. You need to do your laundry and pack your lunches. And, you know, I, I, I developed this attitude as I went along, but it served me well and it really served the kids well. So um, that's, that's in the beginning of the book, I do discuss a little bit more about how I came to this mindset and how I right. developed it uh, just kind of by default, but in, in what you're deci deciding here or saying here is that you've got this study that shows that, you know, lower income families are raising more independent kids at kind of makes me wonder if I had only had two, would I have been more hands-on? Would I have been more, um, I don't know, you know, following up and, and helping them along? I, I don't mm -hmm. know, but it's an interesting thing to think about. Definitely. So you, I mean, you went from one uh, to one to four. I mean, that's, that's insane. <laughs> and if they're triplets, I mean, do you have trouble telling them apart and everything? Are they, um, are they identical? Uh, okay, so what happened was um, I dropped two eggs in one split. So I have identical boys and a girl, and we have an older son. So uh, oh. two of them are identical, but they had 
a couple of pound difference uh, when they were born. So mm-hmm. it was kind of always easy to tell, but there were times where you know, they did gymnastics when they were little and we you know from a distance, I would yell out the wrong name. And my husband like, that's not Scott, that's Derek. <laughs> so there were moments, there were moments and, and the kids did have yeah. a lot of fun, you know, doing, playing the tricks that they should be playing when they're identical twins. And <laughs> <laughs> in fact, right now they're sharing a gym membership because they don't, they're in college. So they don't have the money to pay for two gym memberships. So <laughs> <laughs> they're going. <laughs> oh my God. That's hilarious. Yeah, yeah. Isn't that funny? <laughs> yeah. Like straight out of Parent Trap. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. So then, um, so how did, so when did you, when did you think about writing this book? I mean, was this is like many years later or how did that, how did that come? It was, uh, you know, I had a lot of parents telling me, you know, with all that I was handling, uh, Mm -hmm. with just running a full-time business and then four kids and a husband going to war. And I had a lot of parents I was mentoring on the side for quite a while, Mm -hmm. other parents, um, with the things that I had to learn quick, my, my learning curve was like a vertical line. So I had to learn quickly how to parent these kids and how to treat them as individuals and raise them to be their own person. And, right. um, and so as time was going on, I had a lot of people say, when's the book coming? You should write a book. You should write a book. And I sort of just, you know, well, it never, but then as the kids got older, I would say my oldest was maybe about 13, 14 at the time. And then the triplets were like 10, 11, it really started to get complicated with parenting because everything about parenting mm-hmm. is a phase. Right. So um, it, it got to be like PhD level psychology. And I, I have a, a real gift for that. So I, as I was, you know, handling situations and um, solving, helping them solve problems and coming up with, you know, processes with which they could learn to make decisions or, or be wise beyond their years or get them to talk to me. I had these types of things going on. I, I started thinking, you know, I do have some things to offer. And as I was mentoring Mm -hmm. other parents, I thought, you know, this is really helping other people. And um, I just, I realized that what came sort of second nature to me was sort of counterintuitive and, and, you know, really unique to someone else. What I Mm -hmm. thought of on my own, I started to see was, were ideas that other people didn't think of. And I thought, well, you know, maybe, maybe I do have a knack for this. So, and the book kind of came at the beginning of the teenage years and then getting through teenage years times four was just, you know, I mean, that was (laughs) insane. (laughs) Oh yeah. I can only imagine. I, I, I'm like, I'm just the very beginning. I mean, my, 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 my kids, uh, you know, two, two and a half years old and newborn. <laughs> oh, you have a newborn. That's so fun. Yeah. Wow. So, you've got your hands full. That's a lot. You're, you're very tired. <laughs> yep. Yep. Definitely. <laughs> but Aww. I'm, I'm so glad though. Now I have the whole, uh, I have the, I have the in already on what's gonna, what's, what's to come, right? <laughs> you do. Yes. I, I always say that while teenage years were the most challenging, they were kind of my favorite because little um, changes to your, to your approach to the kids make a huge difference, believe mm-hmm. it or not. Mm-hmm. Um, but if I've always said that as I, if I can, if I can mentor parents when kids are about say three to five age, mm-hmm. um, that is my favorite time because then when they start to learn some of these techniques and these ways, this mindset of parenting, mm-hmm. um, it sets them up for the, for, for the future. And it becomes second nature as to how to handle certain situations and how to treat the kids and how to respond. So you're, mm-hmm. yeah, you've got a lot ahead of you still, but it's right. exciting. It'll be fun. So maybe we could just dive in there. Um, could you give us some, some tips on how to, I guess, guide our kids during that time for between three to five? So, you know, I'm a very big picture person and that has served me well with parenting mm-hmm. and with running my business and just being able to run a family of six. And so it's important for parents to understand, especially like for you now, you've got your two and a half year old and you don't know what's to come. So we tend to really over parent mm-hmm. um, in some moments when we tend to make, you know, grand decisions that certain behavior, like, I'm not sure if you hit the terrible twos yet, but, um, yep. I, you know, I thought that was a joke. I, I'm like, you just need to know how you know how to parent, you know, I'm like, Oh, that's like, 
And boys go through phases a little later than girls. But when my son hit about three years and three months, I, he turned into the Tasmanian devil. And I was like, what is going on? You know, and I, I, I finally realized, yeah. oh, that's terrible twos. Okay. So what I really end up talking to parents about is that it's a, everything's about phases. And if you look at everything as a big picture and mm-hmm. you start to look for patterns, um, right. the parenting of each phase and the parenting, you know, of any moment that's frustrating starts to become a little bit easier because you're looking mm-hmm. at it from the big picture and you're not kind of in the weeds and the minutia of, right. of that moment. Um, mm-hmm. So for three to five, really, you're just looking at um, f- phases of, testing and you know tantrum type things and Mm -hmm. them sort of starting to break away and find their voice a little bit and we tend to get pretty frustrated with that as Mm -hmm. they really ramp up the behavior and they really want the attention and they are I think some parents tend to not give them the credit that they deserve to know that what they're doing they are Mm -hmm. testing us and they are watching to see what our reaction is going to be and therefore at that young age most of the time, many of the times it's, it's really, we don't need a huge reaction. Um, I, I love, I have a saying called, you know, action and not words. And so a lot of times if they're, if they're throwing a tantrum, it's no fun to throw a tantrum if there's no audience. So you just remove yourself, you go in the bathroom and shut the door. I mean, obviously you're still listening and, or you go into the laundry room, you busy yourself and you act as if nothing's happening. You put your invisibility cloak on Uh and you act like it's not going on at all. Um, and then they, you know, it's sort of the phase sort of dissipates because we're not reacting to it. And right. again, if you're looking at the big picture and you realize everything is phase behavior, right. you realize that in those moments, you don't have to over parent. You don't have to be so reactionary. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's kind of how I talk with parents from three to five. Some of the specific behaviors are just like going to the store and, um, if the child is overreacting at the store and they want candy or, you know, the big idea for me is getting parents to know that behavior isn't about changing your child or fixing your child. Right. Behavior from your child is, is about you as the parent. Okay. And so if you can understand that what you're doing or saying is likely feeding that behavior, then Mm -hmm. you'll be more apt to, understand that there's changes that you can make. So I always say we right. change ourselves and our child changes. But mm. traditionally we've been told that we have to change the child and right. we're not fixing the child, we're changing mm-hmm. our approach. So mm-hmm. it takes an awareness, again big picture. So it mm-hmm. takes an awareness that if you're getting behavior that you don't like, right, what are you doing? And if what what you're doing is obviously not working. And I can just say that I as a new parent was yelling all the time. I didn't know. No. I, I was frustrated. It was type A. I right. like just do it because I said, and right. I had to overcome a lot of those uh, changes for myself because mm-hmm. I would see my kids just weren't reacting. Mm-hmm. So some of these younger ages are just about phases and they're about testing the waters and just getting us to not react and getting us to realize that if we're getting a certain behavior, we have to ask mm-hmm. ourselves, what are we Why? doing? And how can we change? And sometimes the slightest tweak is all it takes. I see. So have you um, have you had to mentor um, parents that are older, say, like their kids already, I don't know, eight years old, and mm-hmm. they have been over parenting? Have you have you seen this in some of your um, some people that you've mentored? Uh, well, yes, because we think that we're doing the right thing. And this Mm -hmm. is why another reason why I chose the title that I chose, Um, Uh because we have to learn to give less of an F because we, we, it's not, it's not about us. Right. So it's about the child and their experience and how they're learning and how they can learn to connect dots to Mm -hmm. come to their own conclusions. Uh, And I always like to say that, when I'm mentoring, and especially if it's a parent that's overdoing, mm-hmm. um, I say it's disrespectful. In the end, we think we're doing the right thing, but in the end, it's actually disrespectful to think that your child can't 
solve these problems or have their own opinion or be asked to contribute to the family. Uh, at the very root of it, it's it's a disrespectful behavior. Yet, this is mm-hmm. why a lot of the things that I teach are counterintuitive. Mm-hmm. Because most of the time, the parent will walk away scratching their head like, this isn't going to work. This is the opposite of what I thought I should be doing. It's like, give it a try. And right. sometimes those types of, you know, 180 changes to your behavior and your reaction mm-hmm. are all it takes to get that behavior to change. Mm-hmm. Um, so I have a chapter, uh, in the second half, the, the first half of the book is your relationship with yourself, how to let go of control, how to not do guilt, how to, um, and just, you know, work on your awareness and what right. we're doing. Uh-huh. Uh, then the second half of the book is about your relationship with your child. Mm-hmm. So, where I start talking about that is partnership parenting and Mm -hmm. respect. And we all Mm -hmm. think we're showing our child respect when we're doing these things for them. Uh, But but at the end, in the end, it's not respectful behavior toward the, toward the child. Everybody's Mm -hmm. here on their own journey. Everybody is their own soul. Everybody is their own entity, their own person. And we have to ask ourselves, would we like it if our spouse or partner or friend came in and told us what to do and how to do it? So it's a, it's a delicate balance between being the parent and teaching and doing for the child or overdoing. And one of the things that I teach is that children are adults in training. And right. so if you think of it in terms of adults in training, um, then you'll be more apt to treat the child in a way where you're, you're teaching and training and not over parenting. I love that. I love I love that um you're really starting with respecting the child, you know, and going through that from that point of view. Um I think that's very enlightening to a lot of parents. Well, I'm glad. I the the when and what I'm saying is that I've been on this journey this whole time myself. I went from being a reluctant parent to a reformed yeller. And this is how I had to learn because I saw that what I was doing wasn't working. Uh and so I this is kind of, you know, this isn't me judging. This is me saying, Hey, here's what I did. Here's what I did to change. And here's how I got results. And if Mm -hmm. you ask any parent, especially a parent who might be over parenting, they're going to tell you, of course, I respect my child, but it's really not Mm -hmm. um, because the child has to learn to figure it out. And I'm a big fan of uh, creating mirroring society in your home as -hmm. much as possible. So if, okay. you're, if you don't show up to work, you get fired, right? You know, if you, if you don't drive the speed limit, you get pulled over. If right. you break the law, you go to jail. So mm-hmm. we can't keep propping the kids up and not giving them the freedom within boundaries in our home. The more we can simulate a society where they're learning and drawing their own conclusions and becoming independent, the, mm-hmm. the quicker they become wise beyond their years and independent. I see. So is this sort of how you um, help parents to teach kids to make good decisions? I have a full, or you know, I have a, a process um, on, on decision-making. I, mm-hmm. in the first half of the book, I do talk about uh, something that I call the dynamic decision process. And that's for moms, um, for them to be able to make better decisions, quicker decisions, because like I said, sometimes we get bogged down in the moments and um, a variation of the dynamic decision process is also what I teach for children. And that's, I have um, in the book is, is how to make decisions and I have a wisdom continuum. And it's really just a line where we, we help the, the child think more big picture. So basically what it is in a nutshell, there's different applications for the parent to be able to make decisions because you're firing. I mean, when you're, when you're like for me making, running a business and running a household and, and, and dealing with kids, every day is new with a child. Right. You Every day is a new phase, a new behavior that you've never seen before. So mm-hmm. it's, to try to re- reduce overwhelm and to try to reduce stress. Uh, I talked about my dynamic decision process. And basically what this is, is just zooming in and zooming out or big picture and, you know, looking, applying the big picture to every moment and then looking at the micro moment and deciding how can I apply the big picture to this this decision? Mm -hmm. Because I don't want to have to keep repeating this. So in in, in helping kids make decisions, I have a wisdom continuum where we talk about um, 
here in the big picture, here, he, here's birth, here's, you know, death, here you are. And I basically just give them a pinpoint on the, on the scale. And then we circle that and we say, now, in, in my case, I have given an example in the book about one of my sons who wanted to go into mechanical engineering and then started mm-hmm. falling into the whole high school. My friends are doing this type of stuff. And the teenage years, you know, you, you can't really get through to them sometimes because their friends right. become important. Mm-hmm. So I created the system where you just, you draw the line and you, and you draw where you are here. And then you say, and then here's where you're going to be going to college. And here's where you're going to be starting your career. And we map it out in the big picture. And we start talking about goals and we help them create and formulate the goals that they want and how they're going to get there. So we basically take them out of that micro moment and apply the big picture to that so that they can say, okay, well, the college where your friends are going, do they have a mechanical engineering degree offering, you know, helping them along that line and helping them make those decisions. Um, I have another process where I talk about 360 degree thinking, where we talk Mm -hmm. about different awarenesses and internal awareness, situational awareness. These are all ways to help make decisions, make them Mm -hmm. as informed as possible and apply that to the wisdom continuum. And it really just helps, like, especially with teenagers who are just in that foggy time where they're, you know, all these other unimportant things have a a huge importance to them. It becomes like they're in a little fishbowl when they're in high school, all their friends and all the things that their friends are doing. They don't realize, gosh, in a year, I'm going to be off in college. I'm going to be meeting all new people. And these people's opinions are everything to me today, but they're going to be nothing to me even as much as six to eight months from now. So Uh it's teaching kids to think big picture, think long-term, formulate their goals and Mm -hmm. help them sort of crystallize that for themselves, not apply what I think their goal should be, right? Right. Lead them down with the breadcrumbs to help them discover. Because if you can get your kids formulating goals, then everything that they do has purpose. Mm -hmm. And I find that even with my own kids and their friends, um, as a comparison, I saw a lot of these kids just kind of wandering and not really being talked to or communicated with as to mm. what's coming next. Mm. Um, and so taking the time, just draw, I mean, it's such a rudimentary, just a line with little lines. And then you draw the line and then I draw a little you know, person and this is where you're going to be here. And then I, I also have another chapter in there called programming where we can program our kids. Right. So we program them like, my older son, like, you're such a good leader, you know, even if he's not, like, you're such a good big brother, you know, Um, Uh they start to believe, you know, it's, it's, it's a very, you know, I don't use it all the time, but I I talk about it in the book as a strategy that, for example, when we'd walk anywhere with the triplets, all these strangers would come up, put their nose in their car seat and make and Mm -hmm. ask, you know, rude questions like were you on fertility and you know my older son was standing there he was three like why doesn't anybody care about me you know and it was awkward because these people were fawning over the babies and it was leaving this little three-year-old out of the equation and I started to to see that this was happening so I just said and they have the best big brother ever so I would you know include him in and now I saw him puffing up with pride and now he became the best big brother ever because I programmed that. So Mm -hmm. if you're talking about how to make decisions, you look at the wisdom continuum and you're dealing with a problem and you can't get through to your child and you draw your little line on the continuum you say you program. And then here's where you're in college and here's where you're in your career. And here's where you get them thinking and imagining. And it's all of that type of, you know, reinforcement behavior to try to get their brain firing. Um, Mm -hmm. And it just, those are just techniques that work. Have you found that, uh, um, have you found that your kids are like, like well ahead of others? Yes. Uh, Yes, very much so. Yeah, they are very wise beyond their years. Um, I it's, and it's funny because now they're kind of, they're in college and they are taking on leadership roles with their friends. And it's really kind of fun to see um, because some kids just don't have those connections with their parents. And that's a real, another reason why I wanted to write the book is that I saw a lot of parents really struggling to form those relationships with their kids. And they were doing all the things that were, that were sort of the antithesis of what it takes to create a relationship with your kids. So Mm -hmm. those were things like 
punishments, mm-hmm. um, restrictions, all of the things that we were raised to think we needed to do. Mm-hmm. And uh, I really, am a, I preach about relationship building and my, in the book, in the second half of the book, it's really a lot about how to develop the relationship with your kids of trust. Um, when you're punishing and you're not trusting you're, you're not developing, you know, you're not developing that relationship of trust between each other. You know, you're just, Mm -hmm. you're just having the kids become more secretive. And right Mm -hmm. now it's so important to have that relationship of trust and communication because there's so much going on in the world that our kids have access to that none of us did when we were growing up. Right. Um, Right. Right. So, Um, you know, so different now. (laughs) It is. It is. But it doesn't mean it has to be doom and gloom. I'm not the type of person that's saying, oh, you know, kids have access to porn, kids have access to drugs, all of this stuff. It is what it is. And I'm not going to sit and judge it. I'm not going to sit and be scared of it. I'm not going to be running from it. I'm not going to put my head in the sand. I'm not going to think that I can falsely um, restrict my child to keep him safe. Mm -hmm. No, you've got to meet it head on. You've got to communicate. You've got to teach. You've got to train. And, and I have a, a chapter, one of my favorite chapters is how to get your kids to tell you everything. Mm-hmm. And one of the first things that I say is to brand yourself as unshockable at the mm-hmm. earliest possible stage. So, you know, when your kids are young, they'll ask, mommy, where do babies come from? And some parents mm-hmm. might be tempted to just come up with a little story or whatever, but like, you know, here's how, here, here's how it happens. I am unflappable. I'm unshockable. And even if inside I'm dying, like, you know, I got to go tell my husband, he's never going to believe this. You're, just, <laughs> you're not reacting. You know, you're not reacting. You're just, because if they think that you're reacting and that you, you're, you're scared or you're angry or whatever, they shut, up. Up. They shut mm-hmm. down. They won't tell you. So as early as I could, you know, and I just happen to have kind of a raunchy sense of humor anyway. And I laugh at a lot of stuff. And so my kids <laughs> saw that that was kind of my personality. And um, I just, I could go with the flow, but that's how they learn to trust you is to just kind of not over parenting, give right. the appearance of giving less of an F, right? Mm-hmm. Um, this is how kids then start to come to you and talk to mm-hmm. you and trust you. Do you feel that your relationship is like, uh, more towards like a friend slash parent. Does that, is no. that what it comes okay, to? Well, we are now, but I have an interesting word that I use. And this mm-hmm. is a uh, part of my philosophy um, and it's part of the foundational um, technique that I teach. And it's called partnership parenting. Right. So you're not, you know, early on, you really do need to draw a line because you're the parent. Mm-hmm. Right. So you, you, you don't want to be, people get into these debates, but you're not their friend. You're their parent. Blah, blah, blah. Well, okay. Eventually I'm going to be their friend. I mean, we know that if we develop a good relationship of trust and we develop communication that right now my kids are 20 and 23. So they're my friends they're my best friends. Of course, that's where this is going. We know we're raising our eventual best friends, mm-hmm. but in the beginning we're parents and we need to set boundaries and we need to be respected as authority. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, to bridge that gap between friend and parent, I came up with partnership parenting and that's just how I define it right. because as a partner, you walk together and mm-hmm. it's, I'm here for you. I'm not solving anything for you, but, but I'm here for you. I'm here with you mm-hmm. and partners, you know, we are, we, we blend together. We help one another. It isn't one person above the other person. It's just a different mindset, a different way to look at your parenting through a different lens as a partner. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's, it's a little bit more, you know, uplifting, but it's also not, it's not authoritative, but it's not permissive. Okay. So what advice do you have for parents that are, that are super stressed out? How can they de-stress about, about parenting? Well, again, I, what I really like to focus on is the big picture. And so some of my techniques, um, are about, like I said earlier, zooming in and zooming out, right? So Mm -hmm. if you find yourself really, really stressed, and I do have a course that I'm working on with, with these techniques, but if you find yourself really stressed, I find myself wanting to zoom out, zoom Mm -hmm. into the big picture and think, what do I just need to get done today? And let everything, you know, one or two things that I need to get done today. And Mm -hmm. I make it a conscious effort to let everything else go. And I think big picture, I think, 
Um, you know, if, if you're thinking weeks and months ahead, that's tends to be where the stress lies, if you can mm-hmm. believe that. So if you're thinking, mm-hmm. you know, next week and two weeks and then next month, it, it, it's so overwhelming. If you think in terms of a micro moment where I just do, what am I doing next? What am I doing next? You know, in those moments and you think big picture, um, overall, I just want to enjoy the moment or I just want to get this done. I just want, I, 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 I teach the dynamic between, you know, zooming in and zooming out in terms of mm. how to change your thought process. Right. Um, but so that's really one of the easiest ways to, cause you're in control of that any moment you can change mm-hmm. your thoughts. I have uh, a chapter about your greatest superpower and your greatest superpower is your ability to choose. And honestly, right many times we forget that we have that power because we're so in the moment. Yeah. And when you can train yourself to think big picture and start thinking broad strokes and, um, and just letting some things go, letting Mm -hmm. go of control, we bring on the stress to ourselves. And that's why when I first start working with a parent, I really try to get them to bring awareness to themselves, to realize the power that they have of letting go and making the choices and deciding what really needs to get done and what doesn't. I love that. <laughs> I love that. I think you're right. I mean, a lot of parents are overly, overly stressed and they think everything that they do is going to be. Uh, and we do it to ourselves. Yeah, we really do. We, we, and I, I had to get, I had to go on that journey. I had to come to that conclusion. I had to uh, really figure that out. And I do mm-hmm. help them along the way, you know, with the mentoring, but it's, it's, it's a mindset and it's what we have. We have a hundred percent control over it. So sometimes you just need another person to say, it's okay. You know, been there, done that. Here's how it works out. Let it go. You just need permission. Sometimes you just need someone to tell you. Yeah. I like that. Um, and back to, uh, the technology today, I always ask this, how do you deal with screen time? (laughs) Well, as, as part of the overall philosophy of parenting that I had, um, it's, I did, I had very few rules. Okay. But the rules that I had, I never deviated from. And so consistency is key with parenting, but if you have a lot of rules and you're really overdoing that with the kids, they just, they mm-hmm. just gloss over and they don't take you seriously. So very few rules. Uh, one of them was curfew, but the other one would be, um, screen time or the amount of time that they're gaming. Now we personally, it it wasn't such an explosion when my kids were young, but like, I didn't, I only had one TV in the house and I never allowed video games or anything in the house until they got older. If they went to a friend's house, they could play them fine, but I, I controlled the environment in my own home. Mm -hmm. So I made the choice to not bring that into the house. That was just my choice, but now it's, it's, it's everywhere. And I know we can't really fight it. So you have to manage it. Uh, I'm a part of the, the overall technique that I teach is working in advance. Okay. Mm -hmm. So looking for patterns of behavior, um, and deciding ahead of time, how I'm going to get that behavior to be managed. So if I, if I'm dealing with a problem, whatever that problem is, say screen Mm -hmm. time, yeah. I'm going to back it up and I'm going to say, okay, I know that screen time is an issue. So if I have certain things that I need the child to get done, whether it's, you know, the, the, the dishes or the lawn or, you know, whatever chores they need to do, mm-hmm. you have a very respectful conversation, not in the moment, not in the moment when you're mad. So if you find yourself reacting, you've not, you've not, you're not working in advance. So when we all do that, we get mad. And then I would, I would remind myself, Oh, I'm getting mad. Okay. I've got to stop. So the next day you, when nothing is going on with screen time, you sit down and say, Hey, I noticed that your screen time, you're, you're on there for three, four hours. And that's, we can't manage. That's not what we're going to allow. We've got other things that we've got to get done. So you'll work in advance, creating expectations that you have and that you need. And mm-hmm. all of that has to get done until they earn the screen time. And after that, I'm going to respect you to manage your time, right? Mm -hmm. So this might be hard for some parents to kind of let go of, but in our case, if the schoolwork was done to my satisfaction, so where we don't, 
whatever reports or things that they needed to do if the chores were done, the expectations that I set were done, um, dinner was cleaned up or whatever. They have to earn the right to relax. And I do the same. You know, if I'm going to watch TV at night, I'm going to get on the treadmill. I'm going to make sure I worked out. I'm going to make sure that I've done what I needed to do so that I can earn my free time. I model that same behavior, Mm -hmm. but we teach the kids. We work in advance. I'm going to sit with you. and I'm going to tell you what my expectations are. Mm -hmm. Once those expectations are met, then you can manage your time. And after that, I let it go. Mm. So now, now if I'm, I'm not saying they can be on, on, on the screen all night long, of course, you got to have, you know, bedtime and there's things you can do with tech to turn off the Wi-Fi. I mean, depending on the ages that the kids are, right. um, you know, there's certain things you have to do to shut down mm-hmm. or bring your phone. I remember when the kids were in middle school, everything was so new and exciting. Oh, no, you're going to charge your phones downstairs. You don't have access to them. Um, but in keeping with the whole partnership parenting mentality and the trust and the respect, Mm-hmm. I would have expectations that I said to you up front. You know what I expect of you. We're going right. to talk about this when I'm not yelling and when you're not overusing your screen time. We're going to talk about it. We're going to establish this. Mm-hmm. Then that needs to get done. And then after that, you can manage your time. Now, depending on the age, they, you know, it depends on how much time they get to manage. So, right. for example, if my child is three or four and I'm telling them to pick up their toys, I'm going to stand over them and say, we're picking up our toys and I'm going to make sure it gets done in that moment because their attention mm-hmm. span is so short. Right. Fast forward. If I'm, if my child is 10, 11, 12, and I told them they need to mow the lawn, yep. I'll work in advance and tell them on Thursday night or Friday, yep. so-and-so your, it's your turn to mow the lawn. I want that done by Sunday. Mm-hmm. Manage your time. I respect you. And I, and I know that your time is important. This is partnership mentality. This is respect. Mm -hmm. I'm working in advance and I'm telling you my expectation is that you mow the lawn, but I'm giving you three days to to figure out how that fits into your schedule. It might be that you've got plans on Saturday night. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well then get it done on Sunday. I'm just Mm -hmm. telling you what I want you to do. And I'm telling you what I want it to do. So now by 10, 11, 12, they've earned a three day time period. Whereas mm-hmm. if they're three or four and they need to clean up, they need to get it done while I'm supervising. Because again, they're adults in training. So I'm training that yeah. when I tell you, I want you to pick up, this is what I mean. This is how I want you to do it. Right. And as they get older, they earn more and more time to manage their time. Yeah. See, so if we find ourselves reacting, mm-hmm. well, the method that I teach is working in advance, stop mm-hmm. in that moment and make a note to yourself and say, okay, this is the behavior I want to stop. Right. How can I stop this? Mm-hmm. Then you approach them in a respectful conversation right. when this is not an issue. Mm-hmm. Here's my expectation. Here's your timeline. Yep. Now, is there going to be follow-up involved? Yes. Is Sunday going to roll around and the lawn's not mowed yet? You know, I'm going to be looking at my clock by, by three right. o'clock. The lawn. Do I have to follow up? Of course. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because that's my job as a parent. Right. But yeah. If you're a boss and you're teaching somebody something in an office, this is how a partner would react. This is, you would treat a a perfect stranger with that level of respect that we don't do as children. Mm -hmm. So giving them the expectation and giving them the time to get it done and then following up gently. um, This is what, and I use words like, this is what we agreed to. Do you remember? We agreed. Mm -hmm. I don't say you, we agreed because a partner is a we. So We agreed you were going to get the lawn mode. It's Mm -hmm. three o'clock. I need that to get done. Right. Right. Yeah. So as far Um, as, I mean, I don't know if I answered your time, your screen time specifically, but it's really a methodology and, you know, it's, it's working in advance. It's like getting everything done. And then it's, and then it's like, after that, you know, do what you want with your time. And you'd be surprised. Mm -hmm. You would be so surprised after that. They're Mm -hmm. like, you know, they, they feel so free and trusted. Yeah, I, I can imagine. That's great. Um, uh, I actually had just had something came to my mind is, do your kids now, now that they're older, do they, I mean, they know what you do for a living. Do they ever talk to you about parenting? <laughs> like, you know, you know what I'm saying? They, they talk to me about, um, you know, some of the psychology of parenting. They, they know the techniques that I I, I used with them and uh-huh. they're using it on their friends. Um, <laughs> so, well, one of the biggest things, the, the biggest 
things that I teach. And I just, this took me years to come to this conclusion, but I have a chapter called the magic mantra. And what really what that is, is I'm only in charge of me. I'm not in charge of you. Mm -hmm. And so you can see how that fits into me giving you respect, me letting you manage your time, me letting you mirror society and make your own consequences and right. parenting without giving an F, right? It's mm -hmm. all tied in. See how it's all my, my mindset. Yep. So the whole magic mantra of I'm only in charge of me, I'm not in charge of you is uh, what my kids do now. Like they, they talk about that with their friends and they model that now because, you know, even with my daughter, she'll want to get sucked into drama and people try to suck her into who's did this and who said that. And I'm only in charge of, you know, so she'll repeat that now. I'm only in charge of me. I'm not in charge of you. That's not, that's on you. And that, so we don't necessarily talk about parenting per se, but we talk about the techniques that they were raised with and that I use that mm -hmm. are applicable across the board. And so if you're right. going to apply that's the magic true. mantra, your, 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 your marriage is going to get better. Your work relationships are going to get better because now you're not getting involved where you're not needed. We all get ourselves sucked into things and have an opinion and make a judgment about things that we have no business being involved mm -hmm. with. Right. So if you want to reduce stress, that's the, the huge one is mm -hmm. I'm only in charge of me. I'm not in charge of you. And at the very base of that is, is respect. Mm -hmm. I respect you to solve it. Right. Mm -hmm. You don't need me to tell you what to do. Mm -hmm. And I don't need to be yeah. involved, I see. but that's easier said than done, really. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel it seems that your book is um, entire methodology. It is a parenting yeah. of both um, parenting within parenting with your kids and, and as a partnership. Um, I think it's a great philosophy. Um, so moving forward, do you, are you planning to do another book or? Um, what's the, what's well, next I actually for you? Just, I just was, um, offered to, or invited to write a chapter in a book called letter to our younger selves uh -huh. and it's, um, being launched right now. It's on a bunch of bestseller lists and I contributed a chapter to that. So that's out now is like my second book, but it's a, a, a contributing, you know, there's 30 of uh -huh. us. Um, but cool. as far as my own book, I'm not sure right now, I just launched this in January and I'm building my, my ask mom parenting platform to where I'm mentoring and I'm building some of my online courses okay. so that people can download, you know, quick little easy snippets that help them really kind of drill down on the, some of the philosophies and the methods. If they don't want to do mentoring, if they want to just get the course, I'm still building those right now. But right now I do offer 23 minutes for anyone that wants to connect with me to see if it's a fit. Uh, and then from there, they can decide where they want to go with the mentoring. Um, and then of course there's the book that's available. So, <laughs> but Great. yeah, I don't have any plans on a new book yet. I'm, I'm still, that was a lot of work. It took me several years. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Yeah, I can totally imagine that. So yeah. uh, how, do, how do we find you? How do our listeners find you? Um, askmomparenting.com. Mm -hmm. And that's my website. And my uh, Instagram and Facebook is also the same, Ask Mom Parenting. Uh, and then on the website, like I said, they can sign up for 23 minutes and just connect with me for free. And a lot of times I even just give free advice that has helped people, you know, even, even without the mentoring. I just... I just yeah. really want to help parents. I know what it felt like to be overwhelmed and stressed and really not know what to do, you know, with yelling mm -hmm. and punishing and timeouts and grounding. And I just didn't know. And um, I just want to be somebody to help others. So that's amazing. Thank you so much for your time. I know our listeners must have learned so much from you. I myself learned a lot from you. So well, thank um, you, Sarah. Yeah. Thanks so much for um, coming to our show and really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. It's been fun. Yeah, I had a great time. Okay, guys, um, don't forget to follow at Kung Fu Mama Show, Facebook, IG, and YouTube. Um, and get the book. You guys got to get the book. Um, how uh, Secrets to Parenting Without Giving Up F. <laughs> it's on Amazon and it's on Kobo.com and Barnes & Noble. So there's a variety of places for them to purchase it. Amazing. Okay, thank you so much. Thank really you, appreciate, Sarah, I appreciate it. Thank you.